In today's video, we'll start with the blank chart of the S&P 500. We'll use two simple tools, the Fibonacci extensions tool, along with the trendline tool to mark up our charts and get a much better understanding of some concrete levels that we can use to target inside of the S&P. Those levels will help us not only have some day trading levels or uh, magnets that we can aim for price action to go towards, but also help us build a bias in terms of where we think the S&P is likely to go next. Now let's start first with our trendline tool to draw some price channels. If you haven't already seen our video on how to draw price channels, I'd recommend giving that a watch, which gives you a little bit more in-depth view of how to go about drawing these channels in a few different methods. The process is fairly simple using a trend line. We'll start by taking the high that we see on our charts here, which is at the very beginning of 2023, and we start to draw a line towards the bottom where we connect as many of these dots as possible. Now this longer term trend line that we've been using is a line that looks something like this. So I'll go ahead and place this right here. Now I know this isn't perfect, but we can right click, click extend to the right. So that extends this line out to the right. We can right click one more time and then select the option redraw as channel. And we now have a second line where we can hold it out to where we think this channel is connecting as many dots as possible. Now for us, the channel that we've been using has been something like this right here, which really captures as many of these points towards the bottom as we can. It's okay if it slips out sometimes. We'd like to really just get a bigger picture view of where price action is likely to trade. Now using this method here, if we now draw our shorter term uptrending channel inside of this longer term channel, it's the same exact concept here. We take this low, we connect it to connect as many of these points as we can, and if we right click and now click extend to the right, we're repeating the same process, redraw this channel, we'll connect as many dots at the top as possible here. So maybe that's a little bit narrower, maybe that does a better job. And that will then give us the shorter term uptrend and a rough idea of where the S&P is likely to trade if we continue trading in this trend. Now if we zoom out, this is what we have on our charts in about two minutes so far. That's what we've spent here. We've drawn two different price channels, a longer term uh, downtrending price channel along with a shorter term uptrending price channel. Now the next tool that we can use is our Fibonacci extensions tool. This allows us to compare dollar to dollar moves in the same trend, which just makes the job of arithmetic a lot easier. So say for example, we wanted to see this rally inside of this longer term bear market, that on a dollar basis was about $69.56. What if we wanted to project that from this low to get an idea of, hey, if we go $69.56, where is the S&P likely to stop? Now using the trend line tool, we have to do a little bit of finicking right here to try and find that exact level. The Fibonacci extensions tool makes that really simple and we have uh, projections with one simple level at the end. If you don't know how to draw Fibonacci extensions, be sure to check out our tutorial in which I show you not only how to set up this tool, but also practice on a handful of markets here. Now using the Fibonacci extensions tool, if we compare this swing right here, so this swing low to this swing high, project that from this swing low to try and get an idea of where we think that's likely to exhaust, that gives us a level of 417.67. And this high right here went almost to that level perfectly to a T. We went up to 418.31, before the S&P started to reverse. So the question, the first question is, is this level likely to hold given that price action is already reacting away from it? Now, if we start to see a bit of a bounce here, that's where if we break above 419.67, we're exceeding even this previous level where the S&P has faced resistance. If we use similar levels in this downtrend here, if you wanted to project all of them, you'll see that some of these we've already broken well outside of. So they don't really provide as much value, just adds a little bit of noise to our chart. The longer term downtrending level, that's the largest swing on this downtrend is this level right here. So we can leave this one level for our upside projection for where we're likely to see resistance. Now let's zoom in to the shorter term uptrend and start to narrow in on specific levels specific swings in this shorter term uptrend to get an idea of where we're likely to see support. So if I follow the same process here, I'll take this time our swing high to swing low, and we'll project that from our swing high right here. That, if we compare this swing right here, so that's 
this swing high to this swing low. We project that from this swing high to get a downside projection here. Using simple math, that's 386.96. All that's telling us one more time, if I use the trend line tool, is this swing right here, which was about, what, 31-ish dollars and 35 cents. If we project that from this swing high to this swing low, then that gives us that 31.35 projection. So this swing high minus 31.35, and that gives us 386.96. Now let's repeat this a couple more times for some of these remaining swings. So we have this swing here. We have the shorter term swing right here. We have this longer term swing right here. And I think those are all of the different swings in the shorter term uptrend. So if we zoom in, we can see we really have two different clusters. That's cluster one, this is cluster two. And that tells us that the S&P really, for the most part on average in this uptrend, has really fallen in any of its pullbacks about say $20, $20.50, or about $35. That's been the two different sets of uh, ranges that we've had that the S&P has pulled back within. Now, as of Friday's activity, we've broken a little bit outside of that zone. So say with any time this upcoming week, we start to see a close above this candle or a close above the previous candle's high, any bullish candle, so to speak. And that tells us that, hey, we're reclaiming this shorter term level and this trend's midline here might still be intact. So that gives us some upside levels, knowing that in the longer term downtrend here, we start to hit resistance near that 417.67. Now say we continue breaking even above that midline, we start to tag this resistance zone. That gives us our first double top sort of idea. And this double top idea does hold weight given that this resistance comes from that longer term downtrending channel, this channel right here. And we're projecting this swing low to swing high. And that's really the move where the s and is exhausted. And that's been the most we've seen so far. So if we got one more test of that, that would be a nice double top sort of move where we've had resistance before. Now, if we break above it, sure, that's a stop, but that's really then giving you proof that the S&P is exceeding even what it's done before in this longer term downtrend. That might be some serious signs to start to consider that, hey, maybe this longer term downtrending channel is no longer intact. Now, say on the flip side, the S&P does not have any sort of bullish activity. We continue falling. Our next set of support zones here give us a range of 386.96 to 382.59. And really, the low below that is 374.88. If we fall any lower than that, that really brings this downtrending channel right back into play. In fact, even breaking below 382.59 might do that. But this is your very last support zone where you might be looking to play a shorter term bounce, similar to what we did right here with that butterfly idea. So any breaks really of 382.59 would be breaking below where the S&Ps typically found support in this shorter term uptrend. We're starting to get into outlier territory and that might be your cue that hey the shorter term uptrend is now broken and we might want to start to switch gears here and look for this bearish continuation with this longer term channel so one more time to recap what we did in this video we started by using the simple trend line tool here to draw two different price channels one was a longer term price channel one was a shorter term price channel knowing that we need the longer term trend we need the shorter term trend we started to then switch gears and use the Fibonacci extensions tool to project some levels. The first level we projected was an upside resistance level for wherever the S&P has rallied, so a counter trend move in this overall downtrend where it started to face resistance. That gave us a level of 417.67, and so far the S&P has respected that almost perfectly to a T. Now, after that, we zoomed into the shorter term uptrend here to play what the current trend currently is as we have headed into this level right here. And it's still uptrending considering that these levels have yet to be broken. We have two different sets of levels here, two different clusters, if you will. The lower end of that cluster is 382.59, and the upper end of this cluster or this zone, we've currently traded within, bounced from, and as of Friday's activity, now fallen below. So we're actively monitoring what happens here in this upcoming week, and that gives us some at least smaller day trading magnet levels that we can use with 396.96 along with the level above that, which is 399.95. So call it 400 level. If we zoom out, 
the levels that we have towards the bottom here, 382.59 up to about 386.96. Those are these two sets of zones right down here. I hope you found today's video useful from starting with a blank chart in the S&P 500 to drawing it up using two simple tools to have some concrete levels that you can use for trading with whatever indicator set that you like to use, but now you have some longer term bias using a clean slate to start off with. Just some simple price and Fibonacci tools. Take care everyone, good luck trading, and I'll see you in the next update.